Hello and welcome to part 4 of the photogrammetry process for vegetation uh, to be used in Unreal Engine 5. So in this part of the video, we will be uh, mainly focusing on tiling in Photoshop. So this uh, this looks a bit intimidating, but it is not. Uh, it just If you just follow my steps uh, one by one, it will be easy for you to uh, do this. We will be starting from uh, importing the textures into, into Photoshop. Now you can use any version, the version doesn't matter. Then uh, we will use a specific uh, function in, in Photoshop to generate smart objects. So I will show you show exactly what I mean. Um, then the next we will use uh, layer masks to, uh, to hide and unhide uh, part of the texture to get a very detailed amount of, uh, amount of tiling. So we cannot use any any tools like uh, clone stamp or anything like that because uh, we are basically working in different channels of uh, the texture. So we have to do editing in 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 the color map, uh, in the normal ambient occlusion, roughness, curvature, and whatever different types of maps you want. So the only way to you do this is using a smart object. And we can actually use uh, use uh, tools like lasso, uh, soft brushes, or or like any other tools uh, to get the sp smooth blending. Uh, I will show you how it is done in in Photoshop. Then once the tiling is done, uh, then we will double click on the smart object in the main main document to open that in a separate tab inside Photoshop, and we can hide and unhide uh, whichever texture you want to save. So this also uh, you will understand when I show it. Uh, so let's get started. So when you look in Photoshop, this is a little bit different from uh, what we saw in the last part of the tutorial. Uh, so I made a little bit of changes here. Uh, don't worry about this layer stack over here because that is the number of layers I used for getting the blend. So if you check this inside Max, uh, this is a mesh we uh, did in the last tutorial. We go to wireframe. You can see I haven't done much on it. The only only difference is in the UVs. So if I open this UV editor, if we go into open UV editor and check what is in there. There's a very little bit of change here. So last time, this 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 top part of the uh, trunk was just one, but right now, I I made it into two pieces. At the top and the bottom. So if you look here, so this part directly corresponds to the one over here, and this part directly corresponds to the one over here. So the purpose of this split is because of this section. So this section is is a terrible section. This has to tile between these two parts, and this. If you look at this this seam over here, the seam directly corresponds to the seam over here and the seam over here. So when you tile it vertically, like this part will tile perfectly with this part. So that is the idea. I think uh, you get it. So when you when you bake this in uh, substance, you can directly use these UVs to get a direct a very smooth blend between the top and the bottom. That's all it is here. That's all I did. So back in Photoshop, if you look here, I have directly blending from here to the top. Okay. So the next part I did was this uh, the section in the middle. You will see two more uh, extra blocks of texture here. So this is very simple. Uh, I just used used an extra layer of UVs just to get this uh, baking inside designer. So if you if you look in Max, uh, I got a separate layer for this. If you look here, I got a separate layer. So this is a middle section. It is just a simple unwrap uh, with the UV island somewhere in the middle and i just changed the seam so for the for the other tree for the other other bark for this uh, source the 
the seam was over here. So for the new one, it is somewhere in the back. Actually, hide it here. Uh, we select it. So seam is over here. So for this one, seam is over here. So for the other one, the seam is exactly on the opposite side. So tally will be much easier when, when I do it here. So that is that is what uh, that's what this small section is. So that small section, there's one more here. So I made one more section in in in, in max to just to get a nice blend. Uh, so this is another another se section which I used. You're going to unwrap modifiers. Uh, You see there is one more small small section added to it this one over here uh, that's pretty much it then bake it in designer and you'll you'll get all the textures need, needed baking is the same uh, same way we did as the previous tutorial i'm not going to explain it once more because it'll be uh, a double process so here yeah you know, what have we done so first first you bring bring in as a base Texture. Um, I will. I will show you exactly what I did in a uh, designer. Uh, this is the texture which I was showing you in Photoshop. So this uh, it is the same same texture. Uh, it is just a bake. So how you do the process is like first first you get this bake. There's nothing fancy about it. It is just just the same one but separated into different bakes. Okay. So this is the one one we are going to do. So this is the one after uh, you remove the ambient occlusion and lighting information from the albedo. So it is very clean. So now just uh, copy the texture. So it is uh, 4K by 4K. Uh, just copy it, go into Photoshop. Then you create a new document. Uh, so you can take from clipboard, it's fine. Create, then just uh, paste it. So this will be a the color. Uh, then for the next one, go back into designer, just get all the textures. Then in normal map, uh, you the, this is a combined normal, same one with a very bad tiling, but we will fix it, don't worry about it. Uh, and it tiles perfectly at the top. So when I press space bar, you can see uh, what I mean about that top and bottom section. Now it's uh, perfectly tiling seamless you don't you cannot cannot see any seam because it's perfectly tiny now same thing you copy go into photoshop uh paste it a separate layer and name it as normal then back into substance you do the same with that m and occlusion for the occlusion what you need is you you don't need the baked uh sorry you don't need the uh multiplied AO from normals. You don't know. You don't need that. You just need the normals. I mean the ambient occlusion from the bake. So I just combine them here. This is just for the process of. Uh, this is just for the sake of tiling. So just copy this same way it with Rabbit and normal. Uh, paste. Uh, this is a uh, AO. Then one more thing to do is to get the roughness. So this, this is a roughness from the bake, bake texture. Uh, no, this is the tiled one. So let me get it from the bake. Yeah, because the map is coming from, I mean that bit is coming from the uh, source. So I just change this to the bake, and we'll get it. So I don't need this. So grid and map. What is this? It's the AO. We'll take AO from here. Uh, and you got it. Okay. So that's the roughness map from the bake. Copy it, open Photoshop, you paste it, and just get roughness. And um, I don't need the background layer. I can just uh, delete it and make a small change in the layer order. So this is good. Uh, color, normal, AO and roughness. Now save this. Say save this document as a separate texture and first select all these. Now we are going to make a smart object. Select all of these, uh, uh, put them into the 
in a, into a group 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 of layers and just name it as um, bark source or something bark source and right click on this group and just convert to smart object so this smart object is a, is a one we will use for masking and to create a terrible texture here so what's the use of this smart object so when you see here you can see a small icon that represents uh, this as a smart object so when you double click on this it will open in a separate tab with all the textures intact so here i can hide and unhide so uh, what will happen if i unhide this color map and just show the normal and just save just save file save now what will happen is it will update the uh, the smart object in this main main document so whatever i did here it will update to that specific map i need now if i go and change changes to m occlusion I'll save it and when i go back to the main main document it will change so that's the use of uh, uh, that's the main idea of using smart object so save it to color and go back to the document and you can see that it is back to color now how will i hide uh, how will i tile so i'm first uh, first i will show you how to do a simple tiling to fill up this this portion and we'll go back to the main document and i will just unhide all the layers and show you the whole process so here what i will do is i'll just make a copy uh, just just uh, control j it will create a copy of this layer then just use a, a layer mask on it and just fill with black so now the layer mask is to totally black and this this layer is totally invisible now the, the the main thing you have to remember is you have to unlink unlink these two just click, click on this link here now i can i can move the mask independently from the main color layer okay now what you do is select this ma uh, mask and just uh, do a rectangular marquee over the selection over the section which you want to um, work on so it's uh, fixed ratio i'll change to normal now select a marquee here rectangular marquee and just extend it over that gap now just for this section fill with white now now you don't see any change because it is it is showing the same same texture through now if i select the color and if i just move it up you can see that is moving so this what is moving here is the texture within the mask so i i i just just uh, use something like this and zoom in zoom uh, zoom into it and manually use uh, any tools to blend it so right now uh, first i will use a, a lasso tool so uh, like a freehand lasso uh, to get a nice blend so you can use uh, in, in either this this freehand freehand lasso tool polygonal a polygonal lasso is uh, is not to be used because it is it has those harsh edges so use the freehand lasso and just zoom into the texture really zoom in and just draw like this just follow my follow my line just uh, draw through those nice details on it because when you use the uh, white color for the mask you should actually hide all the problems so just draw like this once you finish the sele selection just select the uh, layer mask and uh, fill with white so i'm just using alt delete so it will fill now deselect now if you look closely here you got a really nice blend so you cannot like, you cannot distinguish between the the, the top and the bottom and the seam, seam seam has gone and when you zoom out you still don't see any difference so when i go into the layer, uh, layer mask by clicking alt and left click I can see the mask I was drawing there. So that is how you remove the remove 
irregularities and seams. You cannot use clone stamp for this. And if you also another faster way to do, do is go into the brush mode, like brush here, and choose a really soft brush. So uh, you can you can you can use um, any any brush like uh, like. Airbrush soft or airbrush round, maybe uh, splatter. You can do whatever. You can use whatever to uh, brush you want. But I prefer using a soft brush, and just using, just uh, using black as a mask color, just uh, paint on it. So when you, so when you paint, you use use like use caution, because that is that is what you will be seeing in the final texture. So do a little bit of uh, painting to remove the mask. So the idea is to get to remove that hard edge. So you can use either either tools like brush or just just using the lasso. So another way is you, if you have any custom brushes like what I have here, I got some custom brushes downloaded from the net. I'll use something like uh, like this, a bit of a noisy brush. And uh, when I reduce the size. Um, do like this and let me check the brush settings so I don't need any scattering I just turn off this turn off scattering so this brush should, should be good enough and use black as a mask and paint on the mask just reduce the size and just continue painting so you can also use use this this uh, any any custom brushes to get that nice effect so the idea is to blend between these two remove the the hard line between the top and the bottom. So that is the first part. So remove this, blend, get a nice, uh, nice blend, and and you can just do, uh, and you can get a nice retiring texture. So another problem which you can see straight here is the uh, the amount of uh, repeating like patterns like. One pattern over here, another pattern over here. So, so these two are like very obvious, right? So, we can actually try to remove this. So, how can I do it? Uh, same thing. You make a copy of the of the box source. Just, just Control J, uh, layer copy. Just move it on top of this, and just use a layer mask, and fill with black. Then, uncheck. I mean, unlink. Select the mask and zoom in and just uh, draw a uh, draw around the part which you want to remove. So here I will just uh, use a lasso, this one freehand lasso tool to make a nice uh, selection. So I'm actually focusing on the, the the smooth part smooth part of the bark just to get that nice effect. That is done. Just zoom out a little bit. Now fill this part of the bark with the uh, with the white. If I fill with white, as you can see, there's a small dot. So when I go to Alt, left click, I can see that here. Now select the main color map, and just move it. So I'm actually moving it inside the mask. So again, I can just select whichever part of the texture I need. Maybe this one is good. Uh, yeah, that's good. So we remove that that uh, you know repeating pattern. Now, if I press Shift and click on the mask, you can see uh, how it was changed. Okay, so that is that is how you remove uh, irregularities in, in the texture and get a nice styling. So this is the the full document. I will uh, I will show you how I did this. And what is the end, end result? So I started from this, then I slowly moved up, uh, removing each one part. So I just filled up filled up this big gap with a with with one one chunk of the UV, and then um, so I removed this this seam over here, then just kept on uh, removing this. You know, this 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 was actually a repeating pattern from here here and here. So I just removed one. And it was not looking that bad. Then kept on going, removing all you know those fine small details, adding stuff over over 
like in layers and layers and layers and over, over it. So remove this seam over here. So all these small details can can have a big impact on on the final texture. Now uh, that's all I did on the tiling tiling part. Now I just hide this because you don't need this anymore. Now for this uh, texture, what we did is like if I go into the smart object, if I double click, so you have to uh, swap between. I mean, you have to switch between. Uh, the color map, normal map, sometimes the AO because all of them don't look like uh, don't look equal in in uh, in different conditions. So when I go to normal, turn up the color, save save it. Now if I come back to the main main document, uh, just updating the smart objects because we have a number of layers there. Go back. Now you can see uh, there are some some still some problems left like. Uh, like this one is going some something like somewhere in the middle which which doesn't look natural uh, so find stuff like that and you can still keep working on it but i'm not going to do it do it now so we can do that as a as a for a with a later stage same thing if i uh, hide normal and uh, unhide the immune occlusion save it go back to the main document Now this is the AO. Look, uh, look. There are a lot of problems here. Um, so some of the some of these lines are like just stop stopping abruptly. Uh, for example, this one doesn't look so natural. Uh, this one is okay because I fixed it. There is a little bit of uh, problem here at the at the edge. Try to fix as much as possible. Uh, because depending on the on where the tree is used, if you go really close to it, you might see some details. Otherwise, you don't have to bother much about it. That is smart object. I'll go back to the color. That is one. So at this, at this stage, uh, what I will do is I will save each each one has separate texture to be used in uh, sub substance for the final export so save i'm just saving it as a, as as png uh, so i have made a folder called uh, tiling fix so i'm just saving each one as a color then save it then go back to this smart object then turn off the color save normal then when you go back you will get normal so this is a manual process. Uh, this this you will have to do uh, by saving each each separate texture. Go back to the main doc document, then save as PNG into this uh, wall tree tile zero one normal like that. Save the AO and the roughness. Now after that, we'll go back to Substance and uh, import all the te uh, separate textures. So here, uh, what you can see is I brought in all the tiling fix. So in tiling fix section, I have all the color, normal, and of course, just the one we did just now in Photoshop. So how I am, how I usually do do that is, you get this. That's one we did earlier. So this is the color map. Color map which we just fixed. This is the original bake. So just just import one Photoshop and keep keep below this one. So the idea idea being uh, once you once you make some changes to it, like if you want to add some you add something to it, or or if you made a new sculpting ZBrush which you want to import, then do the sculpting ZBrush just to do the same same process we did before. Uh, import that into designer uh, then do another bake and this will get updated okay 
after removing lighting then again save save this into photoshop open the smart the smart layers and if you want to change the color map like for, like for example you you made a change in the color map um do a, uh, do, do another bake then copy this and paste into the smart object not here uh, open the smart object and paste here and just save it'll get it'll get updated in the main uh, the main document and whatever work, uh, work you did everything will get updated that's the main use of using a smart object and and that's the best now uh, do the same thing for normal so this is, this is a texture after the cutting fix then same thing for the ambient occlusion i have kept it separate here this is the uh, ao after tiling fix and uh, the roughness map after tiling fix this is roughness after tiling tiling fix and then export everything same thing which we did last time you know 2040 by 2048 texture and you get all the maps uh, that is pretty much it uh, for the uh, for the tiling so in the next part of the video series uh, I will show you how to uh, bring everything into uh, into speed tree uh, make a custom geometry for uh, to be to be used in speed tree like uh, if you look here so this so this so this tree was actually um, the 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 same trunk which we just did in designer the same tiling and it's the same uh, same geometry we uh, be made in uh, for, for for baking only difference is that I just extended it at the top and just gave, gave it a little, little bit of twist uh, to be used in speed tree as a final mesh for the tree and there's a little bit of bend here I will show you exactly how it is done uh, for the roots to be uh, to be placed in the engine as per the theme so tiling is good so far this is not bad uh, so we just used a really really small trunk section and tiled it for an unlimited height okay see you guys in the next section thank you